Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the file sharing service uh, that's built into Maverick Server. Now file sharing is uh, usually why a lot of people uh, have a server in the first place or it's one of the first things that comes to mind. And that is the ability to share your files and folders across all your devices so you can store those documents in a centralized location and then have everybody be able to access them from their uh, own individual machines. And so file sharing is uh, built right into Maverick server and uh, it's a uh, pretty central service. So what we're going to do is I'm going to cover uh, how to set it up. I'll cover all of the different details uh, that go into file sharing so that you'll be able to have your uh, file shares up and running in no time. So this is the actual file sharing service. Now, when you actually install uh, Maverick server for the first time, uh, server actually turns the file sharing service on uh, automatically. Uh, it just assumes that that's what you want, and uh, it turns it on. Now, you'll notice that um, uh, with file sharing on, basically what happens is, is, is server takes over a lot of the file sharing duties. So in here, you'll be able to set all the parameters for uh, your file shares, and then you'll be able to share them across your devices on the network, uh, similar to what you might do in your uh, individual uh, Macintosh computers. So uh, this is the file sharing pane right here. You can see we've got a green status light, which means that uh, the f that server's ready to share files on the local uh, network, and you can view them from the sidebar. Uh, we've got two tabs across the top. I've got settings, which is right here, which I'll go into more detail on in a minute, and then I've got connected users over here. And you can see right now I've actually got a user who is connected. Uh, there's the IP address of the person connected. It shows the idle time, so how long they've been just sort of sitting there connected, and then um, what type of connection that they're connected on. Now, uh, with this change over to Maverick Server, uh, Apple is starting to make the move over to SMB2. Uh, previously, they used AFP, which is Apple File uh, Protocol. Uh, SMB is Windows, uh, basically a Windows uh, file sharing protocol. But now Apple's looking to standardize against that. And so with uh, SMB2 that's just come out, uh, they're doing the same thing. So you can see there that uh, this individual is all connected. If I wanted to, I could just click disconnect and it would take them right off of this uh, file share and disconnect them. So you do have a little bit of, um, you know, of, uh, of power here looking at the application and that you can take users off of, the, uh, off of the network and stop their file shares. So let's go back into settings here for a minute. And you'll notice that here I have uh, all my shared folders. And so folders that show up in here are basically folders that are available for sharing. And that, that means that certain people can get into these folders and start to, uh, start to share those folders. Uh, so let's take a look at one of them. I'm going to go into this, uh, let's go into this music folder here. Now what you can do to add a new share, you just click the plus. If you want to take a share off, you click the minus or the pencil uh, allows you to actually edit them. So let's just click uh, the edit here. And this is what uh, the file share window looks like. You can see I've got my uh, music folder up here. It gives me the file path to that music folder. Uh, it has the name of the folder that's here. If I want to, I can view the files. If I just click this view files, it takes me all the way up here. Notice in the sidebar up here, it takes me up to server into the storage area and shows me basically the tree that gets all the way down to where my particular music uh, folder is. So this kind of gives me an idea of where those things are located in the storage area right here. I'm going to go back to file sharing. And let's go back into edit this. Now, down here is where we have the users and their access to this particular file. And so you'll notice we've got a, a, a group for everyone. We've got myself uh, as the owner. We've got staff, which is one of our uh, groups that gets set up automatically. And then you have everyone else. And you'll notice on the side here, we've got uh, some drop downs with some options. Uh, you can see here with everyone, we've got these options to read and write, read, write, and then custom. And again, this is a custom setup because it's the everyone uh, tag that's on here for the groups. Let me go down to uh, one of these down here. Let's go to uh, everyone else for a minute. Now, let me just uh, highlight what each of these things do. Read and write means that you have uh, the ability to see the folder. You can drill into it. You can actually uh, you know, copy folders out of it, and you can also write, folder, write files to that folder. So this allows you to both uh, read and write. This is the highest level of access. It just means you have complete access to those files and folders. Uh, read only means that you can see what's in the folder, but you can't add anything to it. And so you don't, you don't have any opportunity to write to that folder at all, but you can just see what's in there. 
Write means that you don't know what's in the folder, but you can upload things to it. And so you can drop things in there. And it's kind of like uh, if you've ever seen a, a Dropbox kind of a thing where you drop uh, a file into a folder, but then you can't get into the folder to see what else is in there. You just know that your file went in there. And that's what write-only access is. And then you have no access. And this basically means that you won't see the file at all. So this particular folder right now for everyone else that's out there and for staff, they have no access, so they can't even see it. They don't even know that that uh, folder exists. And you can, uh, you can see down here, if you just click the plus, you can start typing and add a name in there. Like if I just type, start typing in Jane, you can see that she shows up. I can add her to the list. Uh, or I could browse uh, to add a user in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, delete that. There we go. And just put it back where it was. So this is how you add and remove users just by doing that. And so that gives you an idea of group manage of the management of the file uh, sharing service. Now, if you look down here under settings, uh, this tells us the type of file sharing service that we're going to make live. Uh, you can share over SMB. Like I said before, that's a Windows protocol. Uh, you can share over AFP, which is Apple File Protocol on there. Uh, you can also share over uh, WebDAV, which is basically uh, allows you to share uh, over devices like iOS devices where you can log into your server and have access to your files on those devices. And this is a really great uh, service that's a part of file sharing that uh, you'll probably take advantage of a lot. And I'm going to show you how that works in a future screencast just to give you a good feel for it. Uh, you can also allow guests to access the share if you want to. So again, those that aren't listed uh, in your users uh, on your network who want to use the share, you can put them on there. Uh, you can also make uh, this available for home directories over AFP. Now, this is where, uh, when you check this box here, you can do it over AFP or SMB. And this is where people's home folders get stored on the server. Now, what that does is that means that instead of the home folders being stored on their local computer, and home folders, again, are things like your documents, your music, uh, your pictures and all those kinds of things. Instead of being stored on the local computer, they get stored on the server, which allows your users then to log into any computer on the network and have access to their home, uh, home folders. So their desktop and everything comes up just as if uh, it was their own personal computer. And this is another great reason why you might want to have a server is for this to work. Uh, I'm just going to leave that alone and cancel this out because I'm going to show you how that works here in a minute. So let me just, let's just cancel out of here. So what I'm going to do is show you how to set up a home folder setup. So what we're going to do is come over here. I'm just going to click this plus right here. We're going to add a folder. And what I'm going to do is uh, let's just go into my documents area here and let's just add a new folder. And I'm going to call this, I'm going to call this folder home folders. Okay, I'm just going to call it home folders and create it. And you can see I've got it right there. I'm going to choose that file now on the server. And what's going to happen is it's going to add it here into this list in uh, just a second. It takes a little while for it to write the uh, settings. So we'll wait till that shows up here. Okay, and there we go. You can see the home folder shows up right here. So we're going to go in and edit this folder now. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, add some access uh, to this folder as a uh, being able to make uh, it available for directories over and we'll just leave it as AFP for right now so that that way we've got um, we've got that set up for people to use so we're going to give read and write access uh, to uh, staff and for everyone uh, else uh, for staff I'm going to do read and write as well just to make sure that everybody's on the same page here we're going to say okay and it's going to write those settings now. And once it's written the settings, it comes back here and we see we're in good shape. All right. So now that home folder is ready for setting up home folders. So let me show you how that works over in the user area. You come over to users and uh, let's say Jane Doe. I'm going to uh, double click on her so I can edit her. And you see here it says home folder. Right now it says local only. But what we're going to do is change it to home folders so that now her home folders will be actually on the server itself. Now I can also then limit her disk usage. And I can say how much I want to let her take up uh, on the server so that she doesn't uh, basically add a bunch of files that then cripples my server because I run out of space. So I can actually uh, put that on there and limit the disk usage. I'm going to leave that alone for right now. And we're going to say OK so that it can write the actual settings on the home folder. So now Jane Doe's home folder should now be on the server. So let's go back in here to file sharing. And uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and pull this up. Let's go to view files for a minute so that it'll pull this up. And you can see now under home folders, we've got Jane Doe. And Jane Doe now has all of her home folders here. Her desktop, documents, downloads, library, movies, everything you would normally find in a home folder is now sitting on my home folders file on my server itself. See, all the way up here on my server hard drive. So now she can log into any computer on my network and have access to her desktop. 
And uh, so that's a really nice uh, benefit of being able to use servers to be able to set this up. Now, one more thing that I want to show you is in the groups area, and that is that groups can have their own, own folders as well. So I'm going to come into the work group uh, group here. And again, this is a group that server sets up automatically by itself. So this is basically, if I just double click on it, uh, will consist of uh, basically your local accounts and uh, your network members. Okay, so that, that group is already created. And what I can do if I want is I can actually click this by giving uh, this group a shared folder. If I, uh, if I just uh, click tap on that to select it, I'm going to say OK. It's going to write those settings now for the work group uh, to have a shared folder. And that's done. Now let's just double click on it again to get into it. And I'm going to click this little arrow here so it shows me where that is. And you can see it's on my server hard drive. There's a groups folder that was created, and here is the work group folder. So basically, anybody in that work group now has access to this folder and can begin to put files and things in here. If I wanted to, if I close this down, if I wanted to, I could uh, limit the access to that folder uh, any way I want to. See how it has groups right here? If I just uh, click the pencil or double click on it, uh, I can go in here and actually change the read and write uh, uh, preferences to whatever I want it to be. So if I don't want, uh, right now it just says that everyone has read-only access, and that means they can only see what's in the, in the file. They can't put anything in there. I can come in here and change that so that they can read and write if I want to, and uh, save that setting, and then everything will be good, and that group will be able to put files in and take files out. So that gives you kind of a, a quick overview of how you can set up these file shares, and you can set up as many as you want to uh, to make that work, and uh, it shouldn't be, too, shouldn't be too hard to do. So anyways, that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.